Hello my friends and welcome on back to Minecraft. Today we have an awesome Minecraft 1.15 double arched bridge tutorial for all of you here today. I'm so very excited about this one. It's a great, very, very simple design that just works. It just works really well, can fit in almost any single biome if you're going for something even slightly medieval-ish themed. But with that, my friends, let's get into the build. All right, everybody, let's get going on with this here or bridge tutorial for today. This thing is going to be seven wide in total. So we've got five blocks in between here, and then that's about how long you need to go for it. I'm not quite sure exactly where it is on this one, but we should be good to go. Our wandering trader is already ready to be crossing the bridge with his llamas and his useless wares. Now to get ourselves started with a bridge, I like to bring in a little bit of stone brick and just kind of etch out the bottom border of this one. You'll see as we move throughout this, it's gonna be a lot of like stone brick bordering areas and then smoother stones on the inside. And the underwater area will be a little interesting for us to record here with the shaders on everything, but it should be okay. So what we want to do throughout here is the pattern right along like this. I'll go over it again with y'all on the other side, so do not worry there. Then we're going to be bringing this up to be in a two tall and then two tall, and then it comes down here and then two more right like that. So again, on the other side, that's one, then up and bring it over two, then up again and do a two and then drop that down and we get a two and we go a one. And then the next two is actually underwater or at water layer. And then bring that up. The middle arch is our smallest arch. You could extend this out and keep them all exactly the same, but I think it's okay here. And then we're going to be bringing this down the one right there, then bring it up being a two. And then we get our last two and we get another two and a one. Then on top of this one, what we want to do is come underneath all of these points that we have where these lower ones are and just bring stone brick going all the way to the base of your river. We will detail this area out a little bit further. Make sure it's looking like it's actually going down into the ground. So it's like that and we don't have like the sand and whatnot like we had on those ones there. It'll make it look a heck of a lot better as we do this build. Then doing that again, same pattern over on this side right here while we are down here underwater let's get all of it done for now what you can do is you can take some stone brick and kind of extend those down here and bring in some of your regular stone bricks as well so you get some stairs on both sides and just again widening out this base so it looks a little bit nicer what i also like to do around the base of this is bring in some cobblestone and just pile it up make it look like it's all kind of piled up around here for me it's almost as if they threw a bunch of stones to the bottom of the river and then came back in and started piling up these pillars out of them. Something to fortify the ground and solidify it so it wasn't just a muddy mess. So you can bring in a lot of this stuff and add in a bunch of mossy stone. This stuff has been probably soaking underground for a, like ages and ages. So you can do that in here. And also in these points, you can break them up a little bit further. You can extend some of your mossy stone bricks coming up your pillars that you have. And just doing a lot of different details right around here. Just like that. And again, more mossy stuff than not mossy stuff is probably the way to go. After roughening up the base, it looks a little bit like this, adding in some slabs and stairs and stuff just around the middle to make it look like the rubble's kind of spread around, some stones have fallen out, everything along those lines will be real, real good for you. Then we can come on up here to this point that we're at, and I'm actually going to be bringing out these stone brick stairs and slabs again for ourselves. And what you can do under here is bring in stairs under every single one of these points including the points that would lead yourselves underwater. So underneath all of the bricks that kind of leads it out to creating this better archy shape for ourselves, it's going to be really, really good. A lot of this concrete that you're seeing here is just temporary blocks that was to get that line in there so you could see how long it was going to be. But we can come over here and get all of these ones in. And then after this, we're going to be working on building up the sides of the bridges itself, which is something really, really easy to do. It's very simple. And I think it's such an, it's so easy to get it right. It's so easy to get it right, but it's also, it can be a little, it's easy to get it right, but it's also easy to screw it up. So at this point, what we're gonna do is just bring in a bunch of cobblestone here, and we're gonna be rounding this out a little bit further for ourselves. So remember that the bridge kind of stopped right here. This is where the arches started. Well, we're actually gonna be extending that out by two blocks as we go. And then actually, you know what, we're going to bring that out three blocks on the bottom. And then that'll kind of give you a, you want to have this coming up two blocks, two blocks, two blocks. And then we come up here and you're actually going to be getting something where you're just going to have this cobblestone being too tall going up the entire thing. So again, that's coming out one, two, three, and then you're going to have it being, or sorry, one, two, three. Yeah, it's going to be a two block and then a two block and then a two block. And then you're just going to kind of top this off throughout here. I know it's going to make our side of this very, very thick, but it's going to be really nice for what we're going to be adding in later on especially like this, it looks a little crazy, right? Well, what you could do on top of this is bring in a bunch of andesite 
and bring in a bunch of stone and we'll kind of vary this as we go. I like to leave the cobblestone towards the bottom and then as you work your way up, add in more and more andesite and add in more and more stone. So just kind of doing your general palette as you're going up throughout it, it's gonna help add a lot more detail onto this one, which is a great way to kind of make the build feel more 3D without actually making it 3D because obviously this is a flat wall right here, but it's still pretty interesting to look at in my opinion. So I think that's a good way for us to go here. And then after we've done all of these little bits and bobs to it, we can kind of move around here. Something like that should be pretty good where that whole top section, I don't like that we have that harsh, harsh line in there without the cobblestone. Like it just felt like that was a very rough line of where stone started and cobblestone ended. So we can kind of mix that up there a little bit more. Then we can bring in our polished andesite stairs and add those on top of here and then add a slab on top of everyone. It's gonna make it look like we almost bordered this area, which is very, very cool. And then on the top layer up here, go ahead and just add those slabs in all the way across. And then you're gonna be coming down this other side and do slab or stair slab, stair slab, stair slab, etc. Also quick correction here, totally missed that one. And that's supposed to be back there and being right like that. And it's gonna work out just fine. So that gives us a great little bit of detail to our, for ourselves here. Let me get the other side in and then we're gonna talk about how to do the middle, uh, I guess, walkway. With both sides detailed out here, we can start to actually work on the top. And what we're gonna, just to give you all a quick glimpse of what's gonna be coming here in the future, is we're gonna have a layer of cobblestone reaching itself up like this being slabs and then this is actually going to be some more full blocks they're going to be creating a little bit of a, a band going across here for stone brick so maybe we'll actually be bringing those up to probably something like this no that'd be a little too tall so maybe yeah well i guess that's going to make the dirt go up there anyway so it's going to be going down here probably uh but anyways that's kind of the general idea for the base we want to have cobblestone down here because if you look a lot of like art for bridges and older bridges and things like that. They Most of them actually had stones piled up along the bottom, which is kind of what we're going for here with the medieval bridge. So we want to keep that in mind. Now for the top of the bridge, what I like to use is a little bit of spruce and a little bit of coarse dirt. And we can even mix in a few spruce trap doors in here to help break all of that stuff up. So to get ourselves started, let's just create this area. If we can play some blocks, uh, create this area down here with a nice little bit of our coarse dirt. Then extending this back right in here, I like to make a smooth slope. I don't like being a slab block, slab block, slab block, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as you work your way up. I like to have it being a little bit calmer. So we're gonna go with a slab and then two blocks. So this is actually gonna, this is gonna be kind of defining a little bit of where those uh, cobblestone slabs we have below are gonna be going. And then we can come up here and throw in another bit of that slab and then do in another two of those blocks right like this throughout here. And then we can bring ourselves up one more slab and then we can bring those blocks going across this entire top point. And then from here, just keep it flat and leveled off and going across the entire center and repeat the same thing down from the other side. So again, that is starting from this block right here, building out a few slabs for yourself and bring yourself back in two coarse dirt and we go slab and we go two coarse dirt, we go slab, two coarse dirt, slab, two coarse dirt. Actually, that's way more than two coarse dirt. Brings it all the way in here to into the center and fill this entire thing in. Now, obviously, when we're looking like this, things feel a little rigid, right? It's very, it's it's rigid. That's a great way of describing it. So a few things that we can do to help kind of spruce it up, literally sprucing it up. Uh, and here is adding in some spruce logs like that or spruce stairs right here to help break it up just so it's not these consistent straight lines and flat lines, everything like this. So we can do a little bit of action right here. You can also bring yourselves out a little bit further and extend something like that. And then maybe we do a few trap doors right in between those just to help add variety into this place. So it's just not these flat lines. There's no real big rhyme or reason to do these things. I'd say leave a little bit of gaps in between all of them so that they can actually stretch and grow themselves out there a little bit further. So maybe we can actually bring in a little bit of this guy right here that kind of makes it a little weird on that corner point, but we do that and then actually just slowly replace them right like that just little bits and bobs like that around here and also you can mix up the coarse dirt i love mixing in regular dirt i think regular dirt is such a good block to mix with coarse dirt it's hard because you got to make sure grass can't grow onto it but in the setting where we're at where no grass is around it it's going to be totally fine so you kind of just start donning a few things like this one thing that i would recommend is it's a little bit hard to see but you see how i made this line right here it's a very loose line and then there's also a very loose line on the side over there that can be a very very simple way of making it look like a wagon came through here so maybe you create these somewhat of lines stretching throughout the whole thing kind of going around like that and bring itself down here and then we start another one at this point 
and bring that up and just make it look like wagon wheels are kind of stretching this out and maybe they're patting the coarse dirt down so it's not quite as in intensive anymore. But just adding in these really, really loose lines, rough lines right along here can be a great way to add some detail into your build. Now, real quickly here, coming back onto the outside, one thing we can do to make this area just feel a lot more unique and decorated, decorative and everything is coming around to these points where we have right above those things and you can actually extend this up to being another block tall and it can kind of work out. You can do that and then fill in this area here with just some cobblestone. I know that's some dirt up there. So what we can do here is actually start to line out these edges with a little bit of that stuff right in here and then bring in maybe some barrels. You can just put a barrel right there. Decorative barrels, great things to include. And on top of your decorative barrel, you can't include a lamp, but you can include maybe a lantern. So little stuff like that helps add these detail bits into here. And then on top of that, what I've been recently really loving doing with a lot of these bridge designs I have is coming through here. And instead of having that stuff filled in, bring in a few upside down stone brick stairs to help it make it feel like we've created a bit of a railing across here. And if I did my math correctly, which I haven't tested this one quite yet, that should finish us off being a perfect even with exactly like that and you can see here it helps open things up a lot more it's a lot just more detailed around this entire area so again coming throughout here keeping our wandering trader underground because you know he doesn't need to come up at all uh and then we can come in here and get rid of both of these and just fill in all of this stuff now our bridge is much more satisfying to walk across and the grass is growing up we have to stop it it can't leak but the bridge is much more satisfying to walk across isn't this nice it feels much more like a very very nice simple bridge for our medieval countryside or whatever you're trying to make, maybe just somewhere inside of your village. Now coming down here, we need to talk about what we can do here, and I lost my cobblestone. We can just grab our cobblestone slabs right in there, and this one really is not that huge of a detail, but you can just do that full strip right in here, and then we need to basically start just lining underneath these as much as we can. I know some points are gonna actually appear a little bit below the stone brick that we had done, or we're gonna be revealing a little bit of dirt if we left it right like that. So maybe we do a full block right in here and just kind of bring in these around. And at this point, we actually want to start it probably coming back down here. And I'm thinking on this one, at this point, we're probably just gonna be bringing all of our stone brick right back down here. And then this stone, these uh, cobblestone slabs coming all the way across, just kind of doing this in the different sections. It helps clean it up a lot more. You can actually add in some mossy cobblestone slabs down there if you would like to, but it just makes the build feel a lot more finished and polished off and everything. And it really doesn't, it's not that apparent down there that you see those ones. If anything, it makes it look like the bridge is sagging a little bit instead of being all pristine and everything it makes it look a little bit more aged. So it can actually help you out a bit further. Then if you'd like to also bring in some upside down stairs right along here to help support these cross beams that we're making with our big archways. Then inside of this one, what you want to do on here is probably raise this up a lot. So this actually will be very pristine inside of the center. So starting at the top of our stone brick for our base one and then working your way up a half slab at a time and you'll be getting something that's supposed to be a stone brick right like this and then carry it all the way across. Now with most of our bridgeway finished up, we can add in a few final detail bits of, I like to come over here and just one block outside of where we had our last stair, add in a polished andesite block, a stone brick wall, and bring up spruce fences coming to three tall, bring in one and just toss a lantern. Super simple lantern design, but just something like that works really, really well to help light up the area here. Then we can do that same thing with one, two, and three tall, bring it in and just lantern right like that i know it's just dumb simple it's so easy but it works really really well just kind of adding an extra detail onto the outside of this area then if you want to really spruce things up and go crazy just kidding we're not using spruce leaves uh you can grab some oak leaves and start to dot these around the edges and make the riverbanks selling the riverbanks is really what's going to make your 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 bridge build that you have here look absolutely awesome, especially filling in some of those under areas. And you can even make it look like some of this stuff is kind of growing up around each other, just growing all over the place. Add in some sugar cane around here, add in some extra grass, some tall grass, some flowers, whatever you want, make it look like this stuff is just going crazy because it's a river after all, it's very, very lush. And maybe things are like kind of starting to grow up the sides of these builds. And that's a lot of really, really simple ways to get some detail in here. Let me experiment around for a little while and I'll show you all the final product. All right, folks, welcome on back to our finished bridge with a few trees and a pathway around it. I did want to show you all it does work 
to actually use a boat going underneath the thing. So, you know, that's fantastic. It is a fully functional Minecraft bridge, so you can use that guy and get in and out of here. Let's go ahead and park that right here. We've got our slippery salmon swimming around in the river below us here, which is awesome. And one thing I wanted to note here, people are asking for some help with pathways and things like that. I did use some world edit to go ahead and get this one in here just super fast. But one thing that you can use is path block, dirt, coarse dirt, and brown concrete powder. It's a very simple road design. I would probably reduce the amount of path block I have in here and maybe bring in a little bit more of these guys and leave the path blocks more on the edge of it than not like a few things I've done inside of my own survival worlds, especially that new pathway that we're working on. But brown concrete powder is a great way to kind of lighten things up and get a little bit of that warmer tone to it. So I wanted to point that out here while we're going throughout it. But anyways, my friends, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you all did enjoy today's tutorial video. If there's anything else that you want to see tutorials on, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. We've got these nice little nature bits on the sides. Not too much to show off here in the end of this one. So hit that subscribe button if you're brand new. And I will catch you on the flip side.